Hello everybody and welcome back to Steve on Steve Plays Tropico 4. Now, this is probably one of my favorite games of all time. I know I say that a lot about a lot of games, but I like a lot of games. Sue me. Um, in case you don't know, this game basically lets you play a small banana republic in the Caribbean region and you can basically make it whatever you want. Make it an American CIA puppet state or vibrant communist revolution a la Cuba. Basically whatever you want to do. And the game is pretty in-depth, you know, you can make your own constitution, make your own politics, appoint ministers, there's various factions you have to please or displease depending on what you're trying to do. There's religion, there's unrest, there's rebels, criminals, etc. It's, it's a great game, it's very in-depth and basically what we're trying what we're gonna be trying to do in this series is trying to build some kind of socialist state. Hopefully this won't, you know, take too long and hopefully we won't fail because this game can be quite difficult and I am, you know, not very good at it, but I do like it very much. So uh, let's get right into it. Let's go play. And the, the campaign is very interesting and there are some very interesting missions like there's one about uh, preparing for the nuclear apocalypse, there's one about being a pirate. It's all very fun, but we'll be playing the sandbox. So let's go sandbox. Um, a lot of these islands are very interesting but I think just for the sake of variety and difficulty we'll go with a random island. Let's go. Okay, so island size, we don't want it to be too big. We'll do medium elevation. We'll put it on the lower side because I don't really like having to like navigate mountains and stuff. It's a bit annoying. Mineral deposit, we'll have it at about here-ish because it's nice to have a lot of minerals in the beginning. Vegetation will have normal vegetation. Although, should we decrease our mineral deposits? Nah, it'll be fine. Alright, let's go forward. It says easy, but eh, we'll see. Okay, political stability. We'll have most of these on medium. Uh, yeah, this makes tourism, game length. Yeah, we'll want to play it until, you know, as long as we can. Population, starting population will have 50. You know, it's quite difficult, but, you know, not as difficult as, say, starting 30. That's impossible, essentially. Random events, yeah, we'll have those on normal. Random events, I think, that's things like, you know, tsunamis and all that kind of stuff. Prominent faction, none. But, of course, we'll try to make uh, the communists the prominent faction. But we won't give us any kind of unfair advantage from the beginning. Free elections. Elections are cl closely monitored by the international community. Uh, we'll keep this off, we'll just, you know, because we won't be manipulating elections that much, because hopefully we'll be able to make a thriving state, we won't need to. Um, a faraway place, less likely to be, no, we'll keep this off. Immigrants out, no, we were going to be relying very heavily, heavily on immigrants, we are going to be building an immigrant nation, essentially. Uh, rebel yell, they're quick to raise up arms now. God mode, no, obviously, modern times on. Difficulty 130. So, you know, obviously that's not as easy as it might have been made to seem. Let's go. And here we can either create a custom leader or we get to pick out of these pre-made ones. And the pre-made ones are pretty interesting. There's obviously Fidel Castro, Man of the People, Communist Rebellion. Pretty interesting stuff. And they all have really nice portraits too. Okay. Papa Doc, Juan Perón, basically a bunch of famous dictators, Pinochet, Antonio Salazar, Noriega, Trujillo, Vivita Perón, um, yeah, and there's one that's always in, in, I think this one showed up in Tropical 3 as well, there's Voodoo Pizza Man, which is just basically like a meme character. We'll be making our own, and I think I already have a pre-made one, yeah, this is it, look at that, we're dressed in typical Soviet style, we'll, we'll be making socialism, so... And the Osara will be a close ally of ours. Although maybe, let's see, costume party leader. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's see, biohazard suit, that's pretty funky. Witch doctor, bouncer, admiral. Yeah, some of these are pretty good. General, union leader, generalissimo. How's that different from the general? Oh yeah, I guess that is general. Uh, but no, we'll go with party leader. Hat. Uh, there's this one. There's. I thought that the two hats that work with the party leader one is the general one, this one, and the Ushanka, which is what we'll be going for. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. Obviously, one of the ways that you could have in like your pre-scripted uh, character and, like trait things, one of the ways you could have risen to power is this is a KGB coup, which would make sense with our attire, but I don't think that'll be it. 
Hairstyle, we'll do, I don't know, Boy Scout, I guess. It's nice and short. Accessories, pipe, mm, cigar. Yeah, let's go with cigar. Beard, uh, no, we don't need a beard. We'll have a mustache, though. We'll have uh, a big, fat, semi-Stalin mustache. Let's go. I'll be calling him Steve. Well, Steve. Background, let's go. So, yeah, Moscow U, I think that's better. Uh, yeah, faster education and skill training, that's really good. Although, of course, a lot of them are quite good. Chief of Police, that's for like an impressive one. Fortunate Son, Silver Spoon. Yeah, Silver Spoon, I've seen a lot of people say that that's the best one, because it gives you a lot of bonuses, but it makes the communist dislike us and we don't want that. So let's go with Moscow U. Rise to power. This is interesting. Communist rebellion is quite good. Farmers production. We don't want to rely on farmers. We want to industrialize pretty soon. Um, elected a socialist. 20% liberty. That's pretty great, actually. Um, installed by KGB. Minus 30% liberty. That's you see, that's not great. Military coup. Religious appointment. Yeah, we'll be going with elected a socialist. And I think these traders are great. They basically give us lower costs on buildings and uh, relations, and that's pretty great. So, let's play! Alright, so, let's just pause real quickly. So, let's just... Oh, this is great, we start quite close to a harbor. This seems like a pretty nice island, lots of room to expand in the beginning. Probably not a lot of very fertile land, let's just check that out, crop conditions. Yeah, not great. Looks like a lot of our farmland is going to be right next to the port, or actually, although we could have it here. Yeah, that could work. I don't see why not. Uh, let's see, natural resources. Let's see, all metals. Oh man, not a lot. I mean, wow, almost none at all. That's kind of unfortunate. I was hoping for a few more, but we'll do what we can. So, we have iron here. And this is salt, if I'm not... No? Bauxite. Okay, I think bauxite is like the metal that gets refined into aluminium. But yeah, that's good. We'll have two mines. That's obviously better than nothing. Then let's see, island conditions. No, that's that's for later. Sir, obviously there's nothing of that left. Yeah, okay, so I think we, we have a pretty okay starting position. Let's uh, start by... We have 50 population and $20,000, or whatever, generic currencies. So the first steps are very important to set up your economy. So we're going to build a road from... Wait, let's... I try to make everything as straight and symmetrical as possible. The one advantage that this game, I believe, personally, is worse than Tropico 5. And I obviously eagerly await the release of Tropico 6, which has been announced some time ago. But the one thing that Tropico 5 is better at than Tropico 4, like for sure, it's not even up to debate, is the roads. Because in this game, the roads can be a pain in the ass. Let's see. I guess this will have to do. I Let's do something like this. Like this. Okay. And that should work. Okay, great. So that was relatively cheap, just $200. Mm. So we've got two corn farms. I wonder where they're actually farming. There's no place really soon here. And I imagine this one's corn. Yeah, this one's in a pretty okay place. Let's build a road all the way up north. And where was that mine? Let's see. We will build a logging camp. Logging camp is actually a very good idea, but we've got other priorities at the moment. So let's see. The first thing you want to build is a government ministry, and I'll explain this a little later. Uh, let's... let's Plunk it right down here. And we'll have a nice road going right across from it. Great. This will help us build our initial grid. This is going to be great. Okay, we've already spent quite a bit of money on this ministry, but it's very important because we want to get a foreign affairs minister, which once again we'll have to spend almost $3,000. So yeah, going to be major expenses in the early game. So let's see. Mine. Perfect. We'll have... Okay, so let's see. How are we going to make the roads? We can have a road going this way. Perfect. That's actually just perfect. Uh, yeah, okay, let's see. Mine, bauxite. Done. 
and then another mine. I guess this is iron, or rather iron, as the British like to pronounce it. Um, okay, and let's build a nice, beautiful road. There we go. So hopefully we will start getting some early work starting to get done. Yep. Let's see, what else do we need? Healthcare and all that kind of stuff is important, but we have some very early priorities we want to get out of the way first. So, anything else from the government? Oh yeah, the diplomatic thing in the character trade that I picked gives us a free foreign office, which is pretty nice. It definitely is pretty nice. Garage, we're gonna want to go. I don't see a single garage in our island, that is terrible. So we're gonna want to have at least two of those ASAP. One there, those are expensive. And I think we're gonna want to build another farm. Marketplace, there we go. Alright, so we'll put our marketplace here. And another garage. Yeah, that should do nicely for the beginning. So let's put priority on the garage, on the market, on the other garage, and then the mines. Alright, so now we can unpause and see our people go to work. So yeah, obviously we started with some food trouble, and basically no economy going on, but that's to, ex to be expected. And uh, hopefully as we start doing stuff, things will happen. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we've got eight construction workers and what, six teamsters. So hopefully stuff will start getting built pretty quickly. Of course, Agent since we Sasha, started... I am oh. happy that you were able to leave your super-secret bunker in Russia in order to join us. <laughs> I have always wanted to ask you, what do you use to make your hair so shiny? Comrade Sonny, I am happy to be here, among our brothers in Tropico, to spread the light of communism for future generations. Exactly. Yes, yes, this is good and all, but really, I want to know... How you got that gorgeous hair? <laughs> yeah, this game, the Tropico series are quite funny. And, you know, I've heard from a lot of people that the banter and the radio in this game is better than in 5. And I have to agree. So, yeah, I think we should speed up time just for now, just so that they actually get to work. For some reason, none of the builders are assigning to anything. That's a bit unfortunate. Maybe it's because there are no garages that are built. Okay, there we go, finally. Things are happening. That's great. Good, good, good. We're gonna want to get our ministry built pretty soon as well. You know, I understand kind of putting everything on high priority kind of negates the point of having priorities at all, but hey. Uh, yeah, okay, so now our two garages are built and nobody's working in them. So let's see, how many people do we have? So we have one person unemployed. That's You see, that's a problem. We need a lot more immigrants. We're going to build an immigration office pretty soon. Where is it? Yeah, that's expensive. Alright, so our market is built. The market is basically where the people get food. And even if you don't have farms, food will get imported and go straight to the markets. And I think that's a bug in this game, but in the late game, when you have like a big sprawling city, even if you have like a bunch of markets everywhere and a bunch of teamsters, you still might not have enough food and people will starve and that's this problem that I was never able to solve. Like I had enough people, I mean I had, I mean, I had enough food being produced and imported and I had enough teamsters and everything, I had enough garages all over the place and supermarkets, but people just would still starve and it was weird. I just never understood why or how that happened. But yeah, our ministry is almost done, let's already get a foreign affairs guy. Yep, yeah, we're gonna go into debt, but that's okay. A freighter is approaching the dock. Excellent, we're still on fast forward, but that's all right. So hopefully this will get built soon. Hopefully this ship will bring in a bunch of immigrants. Five new immigrants, that's pretty good. Yeah, that is really good. Hopefully they'll all start working. Hopefully these mines will be finished soon. Okay, they're being built. Great, the ministry is finished. And there are these things called Council of Ministers. You see, that's another thing that they don't have in Tropico 5. In Tropical 4, you can designate each building as, you know, doing something and has its own, like, way of running. So the Council of Ministers, uh, this basically makes people gain skills faster. Ooh, rain. Nice. Um, People's Committee, this makes people vote communist, which is great. We're gonna put that for now. Uh, since we now have a foreign minister, or at least we will when the next boat arrives, 
um, we'll be able to issue a very, very important edict. And it's this one, uh, USSR Development Aid. And that basically makes apartments and tenements half price, which is great, because if we look now, tenements are three and a half, four thousand basically, and with this edict will be two and a half, two thousand, you know? And that's great. We want that. Alright, our mines are built, and people are starting to work in them. This is gonna be some nice early exports. Let's build an immigration office straight up. Let's go. Uh, these need college workers, I think, high school, but hopefully we'll have a couple of high school students already on the island. Although that's not guaranteed. Alright, so this should start production work fairly soon. And yeah, we should, you know, I think we started out pretty okay, you know, we got people working in everything, this immigration office should be done pretty soon. And when does this dude arrive? When is the next ship? Okay, the ship is coming now, so hopefully we'll be able to get an actual minister in. Yeah, this is great, alright, so you see our market is stocked with food. Alright, uh, Ladonium, okay, let's go normal speed, let's see. Que necesita? Ladonia Moretti, she is Italian, I think. She's 17 or she's our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Now we can issue that edict. Let's see, USSR Development Aid. It's 2000. Our comrades in the USSR have agreed to provide us with blueprints that allow us to construct tenements, apartments, and modern apartments at half their usual price. This one-time investment may save us a lot of pesos in the future. Absolutely. Uh, seven new immigrants. This is great. We're starting great growth and we finally, you know, actually have people working. You know, production 120. This is great. And you see, hopefully this is Teamsters. Yep, they're collecting those resources. Yep, zero storage. Hopefully this gets taken to the port and we can actually start having some nice raw resource exports. We might want to build some plantations soon for some cash crops, however. Oh, sorry, I'm just having a bit of... Ice tea. Okay, excellent. So our immigration office is up and running. It is open. And you see, open doors attracts a lot more immigrants, which is great. Um, for now, then eventually when we have around, what, 200, maybe 300 population, we're going to switch to skilled workers. I'm going to slow it down a bit. But for now, we're going to take all the people we can get. You see, look at that export revenue, 3,000 already and we've basically you know got like no advanced e economy going so that is excellent it really is and we don't have many costs yet we don't have any social programs running Taco yet is currently short on cash yeah that's true what is your take on the situation Penultimo? i blame global warming <laughs> i knew it <laughs> yeah Penultimo is quite a character in this game also, one thing that you don't get to do in Tropical 5 is at some point later in the game you get to modernize your palace into like a... I think it's called the Presidency? Yeah, it's it's really good. Yeah, so defense, we can already hire someone because of the people who work in the palace, so let's get this guy. You always want people with um, high intelligence, because if they have low intelligence, at least like trouble and you have to fire them, and it's a mess. And obviously, there's usually like consequences that you have to deal with, but we don't want that. Alright, I don't think we can fill in any of these posts, that's gonna come later. But those aren't very important at the moment, although let's see. Economy... Yeah, no, we don't really need any of these at the moment. Although I suppose these are... Yeah, let's get a humanitarian aid camp. That makes an, a nationalist pissed, but that doesn't matter. This will keep... Until we like fully get our country stabilized, this will keep, like, food and basic needs stuff under wraps, which is obviously positive. And it disappears automatically as soon as our threshold of food satisfaction reaches us. I think it's above 40. So, yeah, we'll just have that for now. And it's free, so, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, we don't need none of this, none of this stuff at the moment. Uh, yeah. So... We've actually started out pretty okay. Um, yeah, healthy exports soon. Steady production at the mines. The farms are doing okay. Yeah, I thought that the farms were going to go here. Another thing that's different, which I don't know if it's better or worse, I haven't really made up my mind about this. In Tropical 4, you build a farm, and the people will start farming the crops just kind of wherever, in like the nearest fertile land. 
Whereas in Tropical 5, you build a farm, it has like a designated, like, uh, fenced off bit of land where they grow stuff, which, you know, is interesting. But I think this is a pretty cool way of doing it too, you know, I think both are valid and interesting ways of doing it. So yeah, as soon as we get our new, uh, our next export, we're gonna want to build a tenement or two. And hopefully some more money, yeah, obviously it's recommended. And maybe a clinic, although that's expensive. And that might not be staffed for a while. So, let's see, probably some more work stuff. A ranch, maybe, or a plantation. Ranches are cheap, that's great. Oh, yes, a logging camp, we need a logging camp. Logging camps make for good exports, although... Industry. Cement factory, yeah, we get a free cement factory, because I think it's of our administrator thing or something. And we're gonna want to build that. It's free, first of all, so why the hell not? And it makes all construction buildings, constructions in the future cheaper. And I mean, obviously that's a good thing. So let's move it a bit farther away from here. And uh, yeah. Where am I? We're, just, we're going for the limo. Let's go to the construction site. If you want something done, do it yourself. Look at that. <laughs> oh, I just got killed by the truck. Yeah. Nobody's going to the humanitarian. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, makes sense. What does this yellow star mean? I never. I don't know. I'm gonna look that up later. I have this really fancy limo, which, like, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have it. But the game kind of forces you to. Yeah, this is good. We're increasing in production, obviously, because there's more people working there now. Yeah, look at that. Six and a half thousand exports already. This is great. You know, it's a good start. Yeah, we're in debt, but you know. We needed to do that in order for, you know, immediate, short-term growth. My dear Presidente, do you know that your advisor, Penultimo, spells his name with not one, not two, but five typos? <laughs> All intellectuals agree that it is high time we build a high school on our island. Yeah, we will come to that, except, oh nice, we got a bunch of financial aid, that's excellent. Um, we will build a high school, but unfortunately we have other priorities at the moment, like this tenement. Build one here, nicely sandwiched, and another one here, maybe? Uh, yeah. Just because we don't want any homelessness from the beginning, just because it doesn't help anybody. And yeah, we're gonna want to get rid of these shanties as well, because they're terrible. These make people, these make people very unhappy. And basically, the living quality in them is awful, and they're an eyesore. It's they're just awful and everywhere. Bunk houses are fine, you know. Like it's better to not have them, but they're okay for the time being. These houses are great. Um, you know, they're really fancy. They're not fancy, but they're, you know, they're houses. But they're small. They don't fit a lot of people. So obviously, tenements are the way to go. We're gonna put tenements all over the place. Look at that. Seven and a half thousand exports. Alright, so our cement factory has no workers because it needs high school workers, so hopefully a few of those will immigrate. Although, I already got one. Buenos dias. Nice. 54. Ooh, that's not great. Yeah. That's alright. See, we'll export cement, which is great, and it also cheapens all of our construction going forward, which is awesome. So, there's this timeline that goes on, which, like, reflects actual events in history. It unlocks certain things and gives like pr temporary buffs and stuff. So the current buff is military buildings are cheaper, which is nice. Um, we might want to build a few of those actually. Yeah, the, an armory would be nice to get early on because that would guarantee at least some kind of defense force. Well, I suppose we already have three soldiers, so that's okay. Our population is still small. And we're going to want to build a second dock pretty soon. Maybe even here. Actually, no, this is a lake, I forgot. Uh, it would be nice if this was uh, an open lake uh, bay, you know, because then we could connect our mines and stuff immediately to the port. But that's okay, I guess. Here is fine. We might want to do a little road loop here. In fact, I might do that just now. There's a rock. That's annoying. Let's go around the rock. There, perfect. And, you know, we'll build stuff here. But this just makes it a bit easier to take it to the docks. We'll build a second dock here. A freighter is approaching, look at that. Very, very pretty. One thing that I do like about Tropico 5 that I think is a pretty interesting thing is that uh, you can start a different, like, 
eras, you know, like a colonial era, and then like a World War II era, and then a Cold War era. I think that's very interesting. This entire game takes place entirely in the Cold War, essentially. Which is cool, you know, I like the whole Cold War theme, especially because you get to, like, side with the two major superpowers. Look at that, our first tenement is up. Look at them, they look like typical Russian Khrushchevkas, which is great. Yeah, everything is going well, we're doing some nice production, because, you know, the workers who uh, work in the... wherever they work, they gain skill and increase in efficiency, so that, you know, you know that results in greater output. 21 new immigrants, that's amazing. Uh, so yeah, as soon as we build the second tenement, we're going to want to bulldoze these shanks, which one, we'll get rid of the eyesores, and two, we'll get rid of some more room for building stuff. Okay, some people are protesting. Sí. Why are you protesting? What makes, what makes you sad? Okay, that tells me nothing. So, you know, one way to deal with protesters is just shoot them. Uh, one way to is build a prison, but one way which I really like is to build a labor camp. Labor camp, all right. Uh, because first of all, unlike in a prison, they don't just sit there like a bunch of lemons and do nothing. And secondly, well, I mean because they produce actual resources, which is awesome, which you might we can which you can export. And secondly, I might put it right here. And secondly, they stay there forever but until they die. Or until you banish them, which means, you know, or you release them, which guarantees returns for a long time, which is really nice. Which obviously, you know, there's ethical issues of labor camps, but you know, I honestly believe that it's better to have these people, uh, especially in a socialist state, people who are like counter-revolutionaries, etc., have them actually, you know, do something for the society. So yeah, let's build one here. I'm not going to be wasting any money on quick building things because it's, as I said, a waste of money. Let's build a uh, logging camp. This is a perfect place for logging camp. Let's put a high priority on that labor camp. Who's protesting? Is there any way of like tagging her? Erna Castillo. I'm gonna remember her name. Factory worker. Excelencia? What does that mean? Where does she work? Cement factory. Yeah, I'm gonna remember her. Ah, the Presidente never forgets, so to speak. Uh, come on, Tenement. We've got a... Okay, Erna Castillo, she is not going to labor camp because she just became a rebel. Buenos um, dias. That means she just escaped from the society and she's just gone to hide in the hills. And once in a while, they'll attack. And obviously, like, you can make them go back to the society if you've improved conditions. There's this edict, I think, called uh, Amnesty, yeah. But uh, the better way is to just like, you know, wait for them to attack and then just crush them, really. A good way to prevent that from happening in the first place is to imprison them. There's, I think there's a dungeon here. Yeah, there's a dungeon. Colonial fort. And you can make it into a tourist trap, or you can make it into a dungeon. Which you can then rent to the Soviets. Which I think I'll do just now, actually, because they, give you, they pay you 2,000 per, like, what, month, I think? Or per year? And... That's far away, and we don't. We probably won't even reach that at any point during this playthrough. So I don't see. We'll probably do that when we have a bit of cash, because I don't want to waste this money just now. Because it's important to set up our economy. All right, let's get some actual. Uh... Okay, this time I'm just taking ages to build, but um, I think this will be fine for our first video. I think we got our stuff set up. We got our shit together. Yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching, leave a like, subscribe, leave any comments in the comments below, and if you'd like to see anything else on this channel, leave it in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.